good afternoon and good evening depends on your time my amazing beer from people lovers of freedom the little west and the middle belt and i welcome you back to omu biafra tv where we bring you the latest news concerning biafra movement to do the actualization as i welcome you please do me a favor and welcome those around you as i'm also asking you please if you're watching without smacking the red button i beg now make it do your sister a favor go ahead smack the red button click the notification bell so whenever we upload you people to get notified all right so we're going to present you a video please we're going to watch it with open mind remember biafra is our religion in biafra is where we stand that is what it means that either biafra or nothing and as I am asking you, please, in whatever you are doing, do not forget to be praying for the actualization and also for Mazenam the Kano. Yes, same. I will be worldwide. The entire world was a Nigerian freedom fighters all over the world because we're here to set the black race free. Okay? Come on in and let us watch with one mind. Governor Zulum Zoom, uh, this week gave uh, statistics as to over 100,000 people killed in Borono State alone in the last uh, uh, decade or so of, of this war. What are these pillars, that, the three pillars that you mentioned, and how can we re-strategize to ensure that these kind of things don't happen again? Actually, four. The fourth one is the restructure of your army and your security architecture to handle asymmetrical warfare and hybrid threats. Now that will leave for the federal government, you know. But the other three concerns all of us. First of all, we must have a higher value system than the people trying to overrun the country. Don't forget that the challenge they have is that their numbers are small. We are 210 million people in Nigeria. The people who are overrunning us are not up to 100,000. So we must have a better value system where the life of every citizen is so highly valued that the citizen is ready to do a lot for the country and shows no sympathy for those who are coming in to destroy his nation. We must have a superior architecture of thought. You don't play, you don't do this and be at the same level of thought with the people who are taking your country apart. You must be 12 steps ahead, you see? But I'm still saying that the most important one for right now is the war of narratives. And I believe that this is where we need to help to bring everybody on board. A lot of the attacks that are going on are working with the collusion. There's a lot of collusion going on. Why? We forget that as a nation, we came from a history of divide and rule. The demonization of the southern part of the country in the colonial years, the build up to, to the independence, was done on the basis of religion. And whether we like it or not, that wide gulf in religion has often been exploited by many. Now, this global hydra is extremely intelligent. What it does is that it digs up your history, it looks at your strengths. Look, I've advised four generations of current presidents. We were the first in the line of target of this thing. And that's how come we started studying from 1999. So we've had a lot, much longer time, uh, attended several global conferences, done all sorts of stuff. Ever before Nigerians even began to see it, we were already tracking it. So let me give you an example of what we mean by uh, uh, a war of narratives. Now, on one side, some people are saying, oh, it's religious, it's this. We dare not allow that to fly. The questions we need to ask is this. Number one, where was the federal government when a female was engaging the war of narratives in the, in the hallowed chambers in Abuja in uh, 2018, was it, when she began to equate and justify the value of a life of a citizen to that of a cow? You see, what you don't know is that once you begin to inject such things, you are legitimizing what those people are doing. Where were we when a serving governor left the country and went out to a neighboring country to take money to appease people who are coming in to come and destroy us here. Now, don't forget that we have studied this Hydra. This Hydra works with stealth. We have said many times that there are even, the Hydra collapses nations from within. And that's why you need to get the whole country working together, not just the army. Now, to get the whole country working together, there are some things you don't allow. I'm gonna say, for instance, that 
the presidency has a, qu a few questions to answer. Because if you want to build the confidence of the people, there are some things that we must never allow. I'm going to tell you that apart from the, the minimum ones I've mentioned, the major one that is undermining the effort of this war right now is the fact that in 2004, I was involved in an evacuation. Abuka Tafawa Balewa University, they had just slaughtered one boy in their mosque. A young Christian, Sunday Achi was his name. When I got there, the other students who had fatwas on them that were meant to be killed in a university, hmm. we evacuated them, brought them to Lagos. Like I said, I, I worked with Khan presidents through the years, and this has been happening through the years, so it's not as if it's a, a Buhari era thing. It's just that the box stops at the table of leadership. Now, the major question we're asking ourselves is this. The young boys that we interviewed then, the testimonies we took, the person who put a fatwa on them and supervised the killing of one of them, one of them is a federal minister now. <laughs> Even after he was exposed globally. <laughs> you see, how on earth do we want to... I mean, we are one of the people who are rallying people and saying, look, this thing is not religious. It is a religious cover. The best way we can win in Nigeria is, first of all, to blow the religious cover. It is not religious. Mm. It is not religious. But when a man who supervised the killing of a... And he was 30-something, 30 31 years old then. So how do we so, give such so, an excuse? Uh, Who's going to listen to this? Uh, Pastor Thompson, mm. uh, if you say you supervised the killing... Uh, the, I, evacuation. Sure, the evacuation. I of, the evacuation. Of, the guy supervised the killing. That's what I, I'm I saying. Spoke to this, that's, that's, I spoke to the people involved not too long ago. They are still shaking. You were not there, sir. I, 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 I have recorded the students and I spoke to them. Okay, so because this is, um, uh, uh, the minister is not here to be able to say his own side of what's going on. So Apart from that, globally, he was on Al-Qaeda's website, globally, posting stuff in recent years. Now, once you see that, move him out of the way. How are we going to persuade our people to join hands with others across the nation if we, who are coming people down across the country, and they say, look, they know these things, this is common knowledge. Don't make Nigeria a laughing stock around the world. These things are common knowledge. Look, we have seen much bloodshed. We respect this country. We will make it. But all these ideas that we can get there without respecting truth, like Sir Abaka Tafar Balewa said, if we don't respect truth, let us not, they will beat us. Afghanistan, I told you this thing is a war of the heart. People fighting from the heart, if they can infiltrate you, begin to make people more sympathetic. And I'm telling you that these are the narratives. Okay, let's look at the issue of calling people terrorists, bandits. Listen, media is the first multiplier. We need to have a proper session where we know how to name a felon and call a felon a felon. Look, the person who brought up the idea of bandits probably thought it would lower the temperature of the country. But please, a man has cancer, you are treating him for malaria. We need to build consensus over this. This are, Look, the beauty of a democracy, listen to me, is that the executive arm is one part of it. So if we run this democracy properly, what we are all... Look, the only thing that's going to kill Nigeria is cowardice, compromise, corruption. These are the things we need to fear. Hmm. Darkness hmm. is never a problem. Okay. It is the refusal to shine light. So <laughs> we must have, listen, to build this consensus hmm. for people to really gather together and push this thing out of Nigeria. It has to be clear to everybody that, look, if you want to Islamize Nigeria, it's not a crime. If you want to Christianized Nigeria is not a crime. But Nigeria is a nation with laws and rules, and as long as you abide, like we don't laws. allow you to rip up the, the bellies of people, to kill people, and then give excuses and say because a, a man is equal to a cow. What kind of logic is that? Okay. Uh, Mr. Jeffo, uh, the media seems to be an important. Thank you for watching. If the video interests you,